A small vertical face is quite easy to ride up, but as they get taller than your front wheel, you'll need to use trials-based techniques like the punch technique to get up them successfully. This is also useful for undercut logs as the bike literally jumps in the air. Before attempting vertical faces, we recommend you first try some steep banks that aren't quite vertical. We've done a training bit on these. Next, learn the basics of the small practical wheelie and the log punch technique. The punch technique involves a small wheelie that punches the log at around the two-thirds mark. This converts your forward movement into an upward movement and you keep the power on until you drive off the log. Here, Chris Birch uses the same technique on a log stump. You can use the same technique to climb vertical faces. First, we strongly encourage you to have plenty of spotters to make it safe for the rider to make mistakes. Make sure you see our training bit about spotting so that the spotters and the riders are safe. Ride in slowly, speed will only mess things up. The height of the obstacle should be the same distance where you start your wheelie. Keep your body in the default body position to weight the rear wheel. Remember to weight the bike or you won't get enough bounce upward. See the compressed suspension? Punching the vertical face has now stored extra energy in the suspension that will lift the bike up the face as the suspension rebounds. Keep the throttle on hard until you've got some drive up the vertical face. Then you can immediately chop the throttle. Extend your legs to maximise grip on that vertical face for the last bit of push. As the bike bounces up and over, it's important to de-weight as much as possible by bending your legs, thus de-weighting the bike. With luck, this will let the bike rise up and over the vertical face. You can do a controlled drop of the clutch for extra drive, but I'm not using the clutch here as it's forcing me to get the technique right. If first you start with small vertical faces and work your way up, it's surprising how easy it can be to do faces that are taller than your front wheel. I was pretty excited about making it up. So was one of the local guys. Yeah, man. Oh, he's excited. Potential problems. You can see here I barely punch the face at all, so I get less lift. Even more common is not punching the vertical face at all. If you really too late, you'll punch too low and lose upward movement. It's tempting to cut the throttle early because it feels as though the bike will backflip. But the moment the rear wheel hits the face, it will slam the front wheel down no matter what. Stay committed to that throttle until the rear wheel has some drive on that vertical face. This technique will be invaluable if you get into any serious enduro cross or hard technical riding. A huge thanks to our Northern BC volunteers for not only spotting, but having a go at this vertical face too. Hearts of gold, balls of steel.